We're biblically late and we're heading off to this um, Colchester EV workshop thing. Good man, how you doing? It's a bit dirty. I was going to say, you could have washed it, come on. Well I would have, but we didn't have time. Are you pleased? How long have you had it? Very. I've had it two years, I've done 52,000 miles. I just plugged it in even though it's not actually plugged into anything because that way it can't be put in drive otherwise you might wind up with some sort of 14 year old child jumping in the car and I'll tell you what I'm loving the priority parking there are already more people here than I thought there'd be it's all about spreading the word I actually don't mind the, the look of the Nissan Leaf personally but I think Tesla's you know. got it right yes they've got that Jaguar kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Low, sleek yeah. style, but it's a different, it's a sports car, isn't it? Whereas the Leafs of Saloon, it sits up high, it's comfortable. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice driving position in the Leaf. I, I love think, it. See, from this angle, I like the look of the Nissan Leaf. But if I walk round here, I don't like it anymore. Mm. I've had for mine for a couple of months and, uh, yeah, absolutely enjoying it. Easy to plug in and easy to, easy to use and... Uh, but if I didn't drive a Tesla, I'd definitely drive a Leaf. So what was that? You've got an off-grid solar system? So off-grid system. system, yeah. I've been working on it for two or three years, and I've got a 24-volt DC system. That's about 1,000 amp hours. Uh, I've got a 6,000-watt pure sine wave inverter, which is 18,000-watt peak. Uh, and uh, we've got 2.5 kilowatts of solar at the moment, coming through two arrays on the back and front. Um, and it's all been hardwired into the house. So two, two different consumer units. One's feeding the TV, microwave, fridge freezers, freezers running, all of that. Winter, you don't get so much sun, so I just plug the freezers back into the grid. Uh, and then nice. as soon as we get to the sun comes out again, obviously I've got more. If I had a bigger array, which I'd like to double the array size, then we'd see what the math would be on that, obviously last longer. But the new battery technology is seawater uh, batteries um, with Bimble Solar. They yes. actually sell them at the moment. And um, yeah. I'm so. hoping to get an interview with them, I think the uh, seawater battery people I need to send that email Come in when you're ready. got my tripod I prefer not to leave the car until it's locked I should just use the key to lock it really shouldn't I I met James this week, having known about him for a little while. He does a daily video blog on YouTube on electric cars, drones, uh, running, skateboarding, and other exciting things. What we're talking about today is vision and is, in a way, it's an action rather than protesting something to stop. Uh, so what we've got here is we've got pistons, we've got a valve, we've got connecting rods. Let's roll on. And here we've got a bit later, we've got the internal combustion engine. We've got a connecting rod, we've got valves, we've got pistons. So essentially, an industrial combustion engine is Victorian technology. It has made such radical differences many of them very very positive but of course now we have a situation where we've got incredibly bad air pollution which we'll talk about a bit later uh, we have got the carbon levels have rocketed which uh, is one of the prime um, uh, what's the right term um, drivers of, of the, the issues with climate change Darren, thank you. <laughs> Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, I think this is a great way to spend a Sunday afternoon learning about <laughs> EV. Um, yes, I do uh, work for a car industry uh, that sells these cars. Um, but two years ago, I knew nothing of EV. I knew nothing of the car industry. I've changed my views in the space of two years. We're not going to change the world right here and right now. But each one of us that are driving or is driving an electric car, we're doing our little bit. So not only can you save uh, money, 
there's also the environmental benefits as well. I get asked, how, can you, how far can you drive an electric car? My first response is generally, as far as you'd like. Obviously, you need to stop and charge. The Nissan Leaf is actually the fastest production car that Nissan make, 0 to 30. Touch wood, in two years, I'm yet to run out of charge. There's a whole host of tweets that CNC taxis have spoken about. They've now got three out of ten vehicles that have done over 100,000 miles. Wizzy has now completed 150,000 miles and has only lost one bar, just lost its first bar at 150,000 miles. I'm now going to open the floor for questions. <laughs> I knew your hand was going up first. <laughs> A bit worried, I haven't seen so for a couple of hours now. It could be an issue, okay, but there is an audible sound that's played, as I said, under 20 miles an hour. Well, actually, it, it, was, it was done under incredible research for not so much for cyclists, but for partially sighted and blind people. There's a company called Brigade, and they make specifically an electric vehicle sounder. People can both hear and tell which direction it comes from. That's not really for um, cyclists so much, because once you're going about 15, 20 miles an hour, there's not much of a difference between the road and wind noise of a, an electric car and the road and wind noise of you know, any other car on the road. Um, but especially in car parks where you're sort of backing out, because my car, the Tesla, is completely silent. It has nothing, no artificial sound at all. So when I just start rolling, Nobody knows the car's even on, it just literally starts moving. So I do have to be a bit careful with that. Uh, the car that I got there, 14 place, so it's two years old, and my, my monthly fee is £100 a month. With the used Nissan, I actually got all the same benefits. The free charging point, um, I get collected if I screw up and run out of battery. It's included servicing. Uh, yep. so yes, on the, the it's, it's year great. Uh, James, would you like to say something about the price point of the more luxurious... <laughs> Obviously, Teslas are a little bit more expensive. I think they sort of start at 55000 and go up to about 100000 <laughs> But it is amazing how much money you save. If you do the miles, I mean, my car might have started at sixty five grand, but by the time I'm done in about eight or nine years, it's going to be like Renault Clio type of price because they would have saved that much fuel and road tax and congestion charge. So you really do save, you know, literally hundreds of pounds a month. There's quite a lot to say about this. You've only asked five or six questions. <laughs> lithium. Right, it's 3% lithium in electric car batteries. There is enough lithium to make batteries for about another thousand years. We will run out of copper, we will potentially run out of steel or, or iron before then. Lithium is found in a salt in lakes. It is not mined by strip mining, deep mining and all that. Oh, the magnets. Right, well, that is an area where there's huge research. Don't believe that the Tesla motor has any uh, rare earth metals no. in it. It's a sort of, it's an induction motor, so it's, it's two magnets, but they're both electromagnets. I think the original Leaf did use rare earth metals. I'm not sure about the newer ones. I, I don't believe it does. I think it's moved away from I think so, yeah. yeah. I just want to address a bit about the power. The way energy works, it's quite complex because a point of service it is whatever the energy mix is on that supply, but Ecotricity completely matches that with green energy, as do other companies such as Food Energy. If you're taking it from the roof, um, uh, as I do, of course that's green energy. The other day, all the spaces were taken up, but then when we left, and a space has become free. So at the moment, it's kind of workable. I think there's a yes. general understanding amongst the yeah. quick charge operators that they need to build ahead of yeah. demand, because if you had to wait for two cars and then charge yourself, then your 30 minute stop would be here. He went down to the Portalbert oil refinery 
and he saw all these cables, power grid coming in to the, to the refinery. And he thought, how brilliant, they must be selling their byproduct back into the national grid. But when he talked to the guys, they said, oh, no, 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 it's, it's for us to refine the petrol. And, and he said, well, how much do you use? He said, oh, we use the same as Coventry. Uh, yeah, any more? How are we doing on the test drive, Steve? Thank you, Dave. Have you already had one? Let's share this one because it's nice and big. Didn't realise this is actually a Roman town, the oldest recorded town in the UK. Have you got an apple? I'm loving the t-shirt there, mate. Little geek. Big geek. Doing my bit for electric car adoption. So while I was busy in that uh, little EV workshop, Jasper was running around a playground with a bouncy castle, which means, as if you couldn't guess, Yep, he is totally out for the count. Well, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I think the people at this EV workshop, for the most part, knew more about electric cars than general population out there. But even so, one thing is quite clear. Owning an electric car is the best way to really get your head around what those differences are between a fossil vehicle and the future. I hope you've all enjoyed today's vlog post. If you have, remember to like it and subscribe if you haven't already and share it. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. The editing is gonna be such a nightmare on this vlog post because I've got about an hour and a half's worth of footage and I somehow need to cut that down to about eight, nine minutes.